One of the most common issues that I see up and coming rappers face is not having structured lyrics. In this video, I'm gonna explain what structured lyrics are, why they are important, and how you can ensure that your lyrics are structured from here on out. And of course, I'm gonna give you some live examples right here in the studio. So without further ado, let's get it! What's up everybody, this is Cole Miles of ColeMilesStudios.com bringing you another segment of Be A Better Rapper Now. So let's start off with what the word structure actually means in the first place. Structure means coherent form of organization. Let's also take a gander at the word coherent, which means logical and well organized, easy to understand, able to talk or express yourself in a clear way that can be easily understood, working closely well together. And also, let's take a look at the word organization. The act or process of putting different parts of something in a certain order so they can be found or used easily. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, hopefully you can see why having structured lyrics is so important for the following reasons. One, your lyrics are well organized. Two, your lyrics work closely and well together. Three, your lyrics have patterns so other people can follow along easily. And four, so you can wrap your lyrics consistently, repetitively, the same way over and over again. Now here's a few indications that will identify when lyrics are most likely unstructured. One, lack of rhythmic pattern. Two, lack of rhyme scheme pattern. Three, bars don't start or end evenly or have any structured format of length in musical time. Four, the inability to rap verses the same way repetitively. And five, certain parts of the lyrics are being crammed in together and lose their clarity. Now that we've established what structured lyrics are and what they are not, let's dive into FL Studio and I'm gonna to begin to show you how you can start structuring your lyrics. I'll be right back. Now in order to have structured lyrics, you must first establish your four count, which is to say one, two, three, four, to the tempo of the beat. Okay, so I'm just gonna play this beat real quick and do that. All right, here we go. All right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, this beat um, that you're hearing is actually like a two bar loop. So I just did two bars just then. And remember that the kick drum typically falls on the first quarter note and the third quarter note. And then the snare drum typically falls on the second quarter note and the fourth quarter note. Now on this beat that I'm playing is a little bit different. And that's why I wanted to use this as a teaching tool to show you this. The kick drum actually falls on the first beat, but the kick drum actually falls in between the third beat. So with the kick drum, if you listen, it actually hits right before the third beat and right after. So there's like a gap in between it. So let me play that for you and listen for it. One, two, four, one, two. Hear that? One, two, boom, three, four. One, two, boom, three, four. Now one thing that I recommend if you're having problems saying your four count to the tempo, instead of just saying one, two, three, four, try saying one milli, two milli, three milli, four milli. And the reason I say this is because if you say that, it's gonna fill up the gap within each quarter note section. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so these are your quarter note sections here, okay? These different colors represent different quarter, quarter note sections. All right, and I'm just gonna do this for the whole two bars. All right, so you see these gaps in between, these, uh, these additional bars here, these are actually, other note, these are 16th notes that are within that quarter note section. So within each quarter note section, there is four 16th notes that make up that quarter note section. So when you say one milli, for an example, on the first quarter note section, one is being sustained for these two 16th notes. And then when you say milli, which is two syllables, it's filling up the remaining two 16th notes of that quarter note section and so on and so forth. Let me do that for you real quick so you can hear what I'm talking about. One milli, two milli, three milli, four milli, one milli, two milli, three milli, four milli. Now that we've established the four count, it's just as important to maintain the four count. And here's several ways that you can achieve this. Try moving a body part to the four count, such as bobbing your head like one, two, three, four. You could try uh, tapping your foot to the four count. You could try uh, maybe slapping your hand against a hard surface. 
you know, on a table, on your chest, shoot, on your head, whatever works for you. And this technique uses your muscle memory, which is kind of like a human metronome. What is a metronome? A metronome is a device used by musicians that marks time at a selected rate by giving a regular ticking sound. For an example, in this beat, let me just hit the metronome on solo so you can hear it. And it's going to give you a quarter note tick. It's the four count, which is what we're doing. One, two, three, four. Now, many musicians use this technique to, to maintain their four count by moving their body in some type of way. So the next time that you're watching a live musician perform, pay attention to their movement. See if you can notice any type of subtleties in their body language or tapping their feet or whatnot and see what their method is of maintaining that four count. Now, another method of maintaining your four count is using your own internal memory to say the four count in your head, which still manages to free up your vocals so you can rap and perform. Now, this technique is harder for most people to do because it requires you to think about two things at the same time, since you'll be maintaining your four count while you're writing or rapping your lyrics. And once you get good at it, it almost becomes a part of your subconscious and you don't even really have to think about it. Now, another way that you can maintain your tempo, depending on the beat that you're rapping to, oftentimes the beat itself will have some type of internal four count within it. Now, as we discussed earlier, the kick and the snare is oftentimes to the four count. But sometimes other instruments may play in the four count as well, such as hi-hats, strings, bass lines, etc. Just listen to the beat and see if there's any noticeable four count sections that can help guide you in maintaining your four count. Now, once you've established your four count and you've been able to maintain your four count, it's time to start moving on to actually coming up with our cadences by scatting and then putting lyrics to it. For example, pit them on the pit them on the people to pop pay. Had them on the pit them on the rib of the pop pay. Had them on the pad them on the key with the pop pay. But the pad them on the bread them on the bread of the pop pay. Now, once I feel like that I've come up with a cadence that I like, I start coming up with just a combination of words with the right amount of syllables to match the cadence for each measure. Now, this is very important because it ensures that you're rapping in time with the beat and that your syllables that are supposed to be hitting on top of the kick and the snare is indeed doing so, which are typically the four quarter notes that we discussed earlier. And if you're afraid that you may forget some of the cadences that you're coming up with, feel free to record them on a mobile device that you have handy that you can reference to later. And when I'm scatting, I also try to place words with syllables that match certain parts of the cadence that I'm scatting. And to begin with, I'll typically place these words at either the beginning of the bar or the end of the bar just to get me started. Now, if you're having trouble doing all this, I've taken it upon myself to create something that I call bar sheets. Now here's a screenshot of what they look like in use. Now each of the four columns going down the page are separated in four sections, which represent the four quarter note sections of each bar and are labeled one, two, three, four accordingly. And each line going across the page represents one bar. And there's typically 16 bars in a verse. And the bar count is labeled on the left side, one through 16 accordingly. There's also an eight bar section on the hook and the 16 bar verse and eight bar hook repeats three times, which is the typical structure of a full length song. Now I'm gonna wrap this all the way through real quick and then I'm gonna break everything down for you in the bar sheet. Here we go. I'm in a fast food joint and I just ordered a latte. The cashier turns away conveying what I placed. I'm tempted in a unique way you probably won't think as I reach to grab the mic and contemplate what I might say. Okay, so basically this is what's going on with these lyrics here. Now, if you notice the words that are in bold, or words and syllables that are in bold, such as fast, joint, or, right here, and then la, here. These are actually marking the beginning of each quarter note section. So if the kick is hitting at the first quarter note section, I'm saying fast on top of that. Joint is hitting right on top of the snare drum. And remember, in this instance, the kick drum is actually hitting right before the third quarter note and then coming in right after the third quarter note. So this or is gonna be hitting within that gap, okay, which is the third quarter note. And then four of the fourth quarter note, la, is hitting on that snare drum, la te. And you may be wondering, okay, if this is what is the beginning of each quarter note section, and this is the bar here, then what are these words doing here in italics before the beginning? And if you notice that's consistent throughout every bar, there's words here before, the bold here before the bold and here before the bold. What these are is what I call run-ins, okay? And so these technically are not starting on this bar. 
in musical time. They're actually starting on the very end of the bar before it. So for an example, right here, as I say, as I, this is actually a run in. So technically I'm saying this at the very end of the third bar on the fourth quarter note section towards the end. And the reason I do this is because of two reasons, mainly one on the end of, on the fourth quarter note section of my bars, I tend to give myself a little more room to breathe or also give myself room to actually do a run in as well, because I like run ins. They're like smooth transitions between one bar and the next. And I can add a little more cadence to it and kind of give it a little bit more build up and a little bit more oomph or just better transition overall between one bar and the next. That's typically how I like to do it. So if you look at the syllable counts here, you notice these are sh smaller syllable counts than let's say the beginning here and the middle. You notice that? That's why that is. That's why I do that. And everything you see highlighted in yellow, basically these are your, your rhyme schemes and also just words that I intentionally put in there that sound similar to other words. So in this is an example, um, I have quite a bit of words that actually don't rhyme. They just sound similar in the way I'm saying my cadence, they sound similar as well. So for an example, latte, I placed. Those technically don't rhyme. And the same thing for here, won't think, might say. They don't technically rhyme, but the way that I'm, I'm saying them, they sound very similar. And then also here I did some, some things internally with this rhyme scheme where I say uh, away, and then convey and then on the fourth bar you see grab the mic and then here what i might S similar sounding grab the mic what i might these are intentionally put in there to add more similar sounding uh sounds so technically there's not a whole lot of rhyming necessarily going on in this particular example but you can hear how it sounds um it sounds structured it sounds well put together. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to establish my four count to the beat and then I'm going to maintain that four count by some type of bodily movement. Then I'm going to say the word or syllable that falls on the beginning of each quarter note section. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Fast, join, or, lie, cat, turns, con, I, tempt, you, you, won't, reach, mic, plate, mic. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say all the lyrics without the lead-ins. All right. Fast food joint and I just ordered a latte. Cashier turns away conveying what I place. Tempted in a unique way you probably won't think. Reach to grab the mic, I contemplate what I might say. Now I'm gonna wrap the whole thing through with the lead-ins so you can hear the difference, just the subtle difference those lead-in makes to the cadence and flow that I'm going for. All right. I'm in the fast food joint and I just ordered a latte The cashier turns away conveying what I placed I'm tempted in a unique way you probably won't think Cause I reach to grab the mic I contemplate what I might say So hopefully that helped clears up why structured lyrics is so important And I hope you understand how you can start implementing this technique into your writing, into your rapping This will dramatically improve your flow it'll dramatically improve the consistency of your rapping to ensure that you're rapping your stuff the same way over and over again and it's intentional everything is placed intentionally in musical time now i'm going to be sending out these bar sheets to all my subscribers on my newsletter if you're not on the newsletter make sure you jump up on it by getting you a free copy of my ebook the number one fundamental to rapping while i'm sharing with you tips and techniques that i've gathered over the 17 years that i've been rapping on this newsletter is where it all goes down this is how i stay directly connected to all you guys sharing with you exclusive content sending you one email each week with all the new content that I've created because I'm not just making videos on YouTube I'm also writing blogs every single week on my website from topics such as the music industry proper ways to submit music to record labels to radio stations etc ways that you can generate more money on the internet by diversifying yada 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 there's a lot of information on there so go ahead get connected there's a subscribe button and down there is a video playlist with every single how to rap video tutorial that I have ever done this is cole miles with coldmindstudios.com bringing you another segment of be a better rapper now and until next time y'all take care well i'll let you peace